Thanks very much, folks, for taking the time to come along. The presentation here is with my colleague from the Open University, Dr. Tim Hunt. Um, but it's a project that involves numerous people, numerous stakeholders down here. And uh, you'll see the names listed on the screen and indeed the institutions that they, uh, they represent. But I'll start this off. Uh, considering Anne and um, Irene's presentation about plagiarism and academic integrity, I'll start this presentation off by saying I did very little, if actually any of the work. I helped with the money. That's about it, really. I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here, and and Tim and the team are, are the ones that done the, the 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 excellent work that I want to get through today. But that that said. Um, <clears throat> There are a number of, of people here. I want to talk about how we make a great tool, one of the best tools in Moodle, the quiz tool, how to make it that little bit better and how it's been made better. Uh, and, and in this case, I want to highlight on the efficiencies that it brings to a lecture. So breaking the, the um, talk down into different chunks, I want to talk about what makes Moodle great, as I say, or the quiz great. Talk about specific feedback we received within DCU and the, the consortium and how it's led to our involvement in the consortium. And uh, then Tim will go through some of the improvements that have happened because of the productivity and, and the excellent work done by, by the aforementioned consortium. <clears throat> so what makes Moodle great for those of you that are, are uh, not familiar with the quiz tool? It's so much more than a, an MCQ tool. There's over 15 different types question types that you can have in there from filling in the blanks, drag and drop, uh, all sorts of different tools. And indeed, when you, the power of Moodle, you can add in plugins and different question types on top of that. But with core Moodle, you have so many different options there for you. You also have the facility to time quizzes uh, for individuals uh, through what's called user overrides. But you can set quizzes in such a way where it's open for a long period of time. But once they start it, they're restricted to very small amounts of time to actually complete the quiz. You can have personalized feedback. You can even have a blend of question types where some are corrected by the computer, corrected by Moodle, or and others have to be manually corrected by the lecture. And the statistical analysis, and, and it's very interesting to see Patrick was talking about the learning analytics of, of um, his platform there a second ago. The statistics that's available to you on the question performance is, is incredible, and I would say second to none, <clears throat> and, and so insightful to help you improve your practice. So it is great already. However, um, we received feedback from our, our colleagues within DCU saying there was a, a few ways they'd like to see it improved. Uh, sharing questions across quizzes, you reusing them time and time again, seeing how they're used, where they're used, all sorts of different bits and pieces. And <clears throat> this is what made this Moodle consortium so attractive to me. All the members are listed down here, and you'll actually see we gave a, a special mention on number 11, Yvonne. Yvonne is actually uh, part of, and my German is going to be terrible, but I'm going to say the Hochschule in Hanover, number six, I think is the easiest way to do it just because she, she did so much work on the wireframes and the back end behind us, uh, a special mention is, is definitely deserved. But why I put up this slide is to show the, the, the diversity of institutions involved, also the fact that it's a real international collaboration. We recognized um, as, as a sector, recognized the weakness or that improvements need to be made and all of these bodies came together. Now, the total, uh, funds that put into this was in excess of 100,000 euros. But when you start putting it all together or breaking it down into individual institutions, you can actually realize it's not that expensive at all because you can spread it across. Um, <clears throat> some can be more uh, cash rich than others, others can uh, give their time more so. But the whole idea that we were able to develop this. Um, and we were able to join, in our case, uh, join this, this consortium of people where we contributed our ideas. We gave feedback through the Moodle platform on uh, what should happen. And a project was set up across the network to and gain feedback from all of the users um, to implement these quizzes. What I want to get across today to you is there's a ton of money out there in the sector. Uh, whether it's coming from the National Forum, which is where we used our money for, this was one of our outputs, 
<clears throat> to improve the quiz functionality for our, our, our end users, both students and, and teachers. Um, there's a ton of money out there. There's a ton of money coming. You could use some of that money to actually develop some open source uh, content, open source software, and improve some of the, the, in our case, Moodle functionality that's available to you. But just to give you a flavor of what has been delivered uh, based on through this consortium, I just want to hand over to my colleague, uh, Dr. Tim Hunt from the Open University. Thank you very much, Mark. So Mark has described the process by which um, these changes got made in Moodle. And now I'm going to tell you very briefly what the changes were. And if you want to see more, if you are a Moodle user and want to know more, in the chat, I've just put a link to a place where the new features were demonstrated and you can watch that later. So Moodle 4 is the version that's going to be released in a few months time. They're currently aiming at March. Uh, we've got our bits in. Um, the biggest change, which actually is still having the finishing touches put on it, is that in future, Moodle is going to keep a complete version history as you edit questions. Now, that provides a very useful audit trail um, if you're wondering what's happened. It also solves, in the past, Moodle just had one version of a question. And if you changed it, if students were in the middle of a quiz attempt, that could cause problems. And finally, we're gonna fix those long-standing problems with what happens if someone changes a question while the attempt's in progress. So versioning is very powerful and really a necessary prerequisite to being able to share stuff with confidence, I think. And really a driver for all these changes really is about better sharing and collaboration about building banks of questions. Another part of this is when you're in a quiz, uh, sorry, when you're when you're managing questions in the question bank, uh, which may be shared across quizzes in all sorts of places, in future, um, in the question bank, it will show you if this quiz is, if this question is in use in various places, you'll be able to see that as you're editing it, which is useful information. And actually, we won't just show you that this question is used in this quiz. Um, as, as, as Mark mentioned, the quiz has powerful statistics and those statistics will now be exposed in the question bank. So if, the, you know, if this is a question that's been used in various places, you can get an overview of how well it's working as you're editing it, or indeed as you're deciding whether to use it in another quiz in future. And another little feature to help collaboration is that for the people working on questions, they'll now be able to leave comments for each other these are just between the teachers working on questions. They aren't visible by students in this case. Two and minutes, un Tim. Two yeah, minutes. underlying all this is um, that all these features in the question bank, Mood Moodle Long has a philosophy that everything should be a plugin. So, you know, if you want a new feature, you can create a plugin and slot it in and get the extra features you want without having to change the core of the project. Can we go on to the next slide, please, Mark? Now, we had lots of things we wanted to do to improve Moodle, and actually we didn't get them all done in Moodle 4.0. So we have further ideas we're planning to deliver as part of Moodle 4.1, which will come out towards the end of this calendar year. So we've got more ideas about making it easier to control how questions are shared, to control which banks of questions you have and who can use which question banks and who can edit which question banks. Um, we have great ideas for increasing the flexibility for filtering, for searching in the question bank, finding particular groups of questions that you want. And that's not just about finding them in the question bank as you're maintaining your question bank, but also Moodle has the feature where a quiz can be like, this quiz is going to be five questions picked at random from this question bank. But now all the different rules, all the different ways you can filter the list of questions can also be used when assembling questions randomly to form a quiz. And then there's just a whole heap of little things. As we worked on the bigger changes, we've noticed all these little things that could do with a bit of polish and um, they're on the list for Moodle 4.1 as well. And I think I'll pause there and hand back to Mike to wrap, Mark to wrap up. Tim, and I've circulated the slides there in the chat if anybody needs it, but just to wrap up really, you'll see from the magnitude the changes that's been made through consortium together is definitely better. Um, as I said, DCU's contribution 
was as as part of a national forum funded project um and and the majority of the work actually all of the work was done by the rest of the the consortium but if you have ideas for improvement if you have plugins you want to develop i would definitely encourage you to collaborate um with, with others <clears throat> and I'll, I'll finish off really by saying because we've taken the approach that we have um, it's a very, very sustainable project because all of this development has gone into core Moodle and because Moodle uh, and, and the quiz feature within Moodle is widely used, um, the impact is very widespread across uh, the, literally the millions of users worldwide. So with a minimal investment from each individual institution, we were able to make a, an incredibly sustainable and impactful um, change to how people uh, use the Moodle quiz. And that's that's pretty much it. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Tim, for, for a great presentation. Um, the power of collaboration, which uh, we've, we've, we probably have embraced a lot more over the last few years, I think, as, uh, as higher education institutions. But uh, it's great to, great to see that. Um, so can I uh, invite questions from the, from the floor if you want to um, unmute yourselves and ask questions? I'm just going to stop your slides there, Mark, so we can see everybody. Any questions for, for Mark or Tim? Tim said there is possibly a phase three of this project as well, subject to funding. <coughs> yeah, well, as you say, Mark, there is a lot of uh, funding uh, out there right now. Um, from different, and it, uh, it's incredibly uh, frustrating when people spend money on on licenses or buy commercial platforms, and then once the that project fund is gone, yeah. that that the, the benefit is gone. Whereas this money put into the development and into open source, particularly, which I'd be a big fan of, just makes it so much more sustainable and a much wiser uh, investment in funds. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really important point. Um, as you say, with, with Moodle, you can develop the, the plugins when, when you need them or you identify a need for them. 